Yes, yeah, so we're sitting in my office at Pivotal Labs headquarters in San Francisco. Um, there's about 120 developers out there and designers and PMs working on projects. Mm -hmm. And my name is Edward Hyatt, I run Pivotal Labs. Mm -hmm. I've been in the company for about uh, a little over 10 years. Um, so I've seen it grow from a handful of um, like-minded consultants um, to what it is today, which is about 450 total uh, engineers and designers and PMs across 10 different geographical locations in multiple countries. We are well known for building high quality software quickly, but using very modern um, development methods, so-called agile development methods, although so really our philosophy is, evolves around, revolves around extreme programming, mm -hmm. which was a term coined in the late 90s for a certain flavor of agile development. Mm -hmm. It tends to be a highly disciplined uh, way of working, Mm -hmm. uh, with various techniques that are, that are quite well known as you're, as you're leading towards. Mm -hmm. um, so we use these methods and we evolve these methods over the last 10, 12 years um, as we've worked with thousands of clients. We tend to work in the very similar ways across all projects, across all locations. Mm -hmm. And the services we're, we're adding to clients are, are not just around uh, building software for them, mm -hmm. but it's really about building software with clients mm -hmm. and optionally you know, teaching the clients or showing the clients how it is that we build so that when they leave us, when they finish the engagements, they can optionally continue on with those uh, practices mm -hmm. to make themselves more productive over time. I see. So um, you know, I think of a, a dial with two extremes. A client can approach and want to essentially outsource software development to us. Mm -hmm. Um, or they can have the other extreme, which is they want to come and work on the teams with us. Mm -hmm. you know, field development uh, staff, field design, product management staff on the teams with us. Mm -hmm. And really have that tight collaboration notion, physical togetherness mm -hmm. notion. Um, the reasons clients want to do that latter extreme or somewhere towards it mm -hmm. are around wanting to learn in more depth how we work to get a benefit from the engagement with us as well. Right. So we, what we do to transfer our methods and, and teach our methods really is simply work together and almost through osmosis uh, the, the processes are transferred. Mm -hmm. So uh, working together, how, how do we collaborate? It looks like um, a, a client team coming in and physically co-locating with us, often in our own offices, mm -hmm. um, although we can go to theirs, and, and working side by side. Um, one of the practices that we use on every project, one of these things under the extreme programming uh, umbrella is pair programming mm -hmm. and that is probably the most powerful technique we employ to transfer process knowledge between um, between us and our clients. Mm -hmm. So the pair programming itself is a process point which we teach by doing with the clients mm -hmm. but through the act of pairing so much more is, is shown and discussed and debated and honed than mm -hmm. just pairing itself. Mm -hmm. uh, all the other processes get ingrained through the act of pairing. So it's is probably the most critical of our practices to, for the training aspect. So pair programming is, uh, what it actually looks like is there's, there's two developers, or two designers, we're, we're looking at design pair programming these days a lot too, but traditionally two developers sitting at one computer together. Mm -hmm. So if you look out there, each team has an even number of developers arranged in pairs, um, and each pair is at one machine, they're working together on code. Mm -hmm. right? So rather than individuals working on their own machines, and collaborating in some touch point sense. There's pairs of developers working together at any given moment. So all code is written in a paired setting. Mm -hmm. The pairs form in the morning mm -hmm. and tend to be changed up um, you know, within the team context roughly every 24 hours, typically at the beginning of a new day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what pairing actually is. The reason we do pairing is because it's more effective, we find, in the long term especially, by which I mean you know, months of development. Mm -hmm. um, much more effective, much faster mm -hmm. than individual coding. So some teams engage right off the bat with half the team staffed with their engineers. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, you know, what we're showing the clients is through pairing all the other disciplines that we haven't talked about, you know, test-driven development, CI, cloud-based deployments, all that kind of thing, technology and process points mm -hmm. all the way. So the clients leave with absolute knowledge of their code base, absolute knowledge of how to test their code base, absolute knowledge of how to deploy their code base. Mm -hmm. So the handoff of the code is much less, here's the code, good luck. It's more, continue running without us. Perhaps the horsepower drops, but the, the team keeps going productively. Mm -hmm. A client could also engage by employing us 
by ourselves to begin with, mm -hmm. and then adding their own stuff over a time or near the end of a project. Mm -hmm. right? And again, the idea is this smooth handoff of the code base mm -hmm. and, the, and the work product, as opposed to, you know, the, the last few days, I hope you like this code. It's, it's documented well in this big Word document, right? Good luck. Mm -hmm. It's much more about let's work together and go through the actual motions of practically running this code base and building on it. You know, pair programming now is something that's known in the industry. People have heard of it. Um, ten years ago, it was something no one had heard of, and we were we were uh, unusual, very unusual. I think people come in now, willing to try pair programming, mm -hmm. interested in it, understanding it intellectually, knowing some of the points I've, I've listed, but not having really experienced it and really had the aha moments of why it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so typically, a client will come in with that mindset, like, yeah, sure, let's try it. Um, when they leave, they, they almost universally are completely sold on the notion of pairing. Mm -hmm. and they've, seen such, they've seen the power of it. Mm -hmm. And by working with us, we, we just enforce the discipline of always doing it. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get over that hump of really trying it out, sort of leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And then people almost always get the, the value just by doing it with us. Exactly. They have that kind of experiential knowledge of it. Um, so almost universally, clients leave intending to continue it.